Hello everyone, welcome to this video entitled Tips and Tricks number 12 Weird but useful things to do in QSpice Before starting, I want to thank our industry mecenas Frenetic for their support Frenetic is a company that deals with the optimization of power converters using artificial intelligence If you are interested, you can try their software for free by using the link provided in the description of this video. So the motivation of this video is the answer to this question is why move to other mathematical software if we can keep using QSpice? So many times we are doing our simulation of our converter, but we have also to do the design, to do a mathematical operation, to do calculations and so on. So the point is if it's necessary to go to other mathematical software, open the software and work with it and then get the results into QSpice and so on. When QSpice at the end is a mathematical software too, so we can continue using QSpice, so we can keep working in the same way. So the point today is to see some weird things that we can do using QSpice that usually we don't do, but that they can be really interesting. So for example, here we are going to see how to do a function plotting. Imagine that we want to plot this function in which we want to obtain the variable equal to x squared. So this is the plotting of the function. And we want to do this from a negative value up to a positive value. For example, here from minus 2 to 2. So how to do this? Of course, we are going to use the time as a variable in the x-axis. But the first thing that we have to do is a change of scale in order to have the possibility of having negative values on the x-axis. So here with these parameters we are defining the minimum value and the maximum value of the variable x and also the number of points that we are going to use for the representation. So now we create the variable x by adding to the time the minimum value of the variable x. So in this way we are going to have the first value is 0 plus x min. So the first value of x is going to be x min. And the other trick that we are doing is to make equal the last value of the simulation to x max minus x min. So in this way the final value for the variable x will be x max. When time is equal to x max minus x min, we will have here the value of x max. And for the step of the simulation, we use this value, which is the total range divided by the number of points that we want to have in our plotting. So here on the right, we can see the value of x going from minus 2 up to 2. We can do the plotting as a function of v of x. And we can go even further, we can do integrals with the waveforms. Here we are defining the range of integration from minus 0.5 up to 1.5. And then using a measure statement, we can do the integral of y. The only thing is that we have to correct here the value of the range to go back to the value corresponding to time. So instead of writing here x1, we write x1 minus x min and x2 minus x min. And that's it. We have here the value at the end of the simulation. We will get here the value of this integral on the output window. And all this is very quick to be done. We can do everything using QSpice and without going out and open another program and we can keep using QSpice for everything. 
So here we have the program and if we want to do, do the representation as a function of x, right now we are showing here time. If we want to do the representation as a function of our variable, then right click, we change here the variable and select v of x. So now we are representing as a function of x from minus 2 to 2. And if we want to do other range, for example, from minus 5 to 10, we change this and run the simulation. So now we have the new plotting. So this is very quick and very useful because on QSpice we already have here a window to do plottings and we can do this very quickly and we can copy this to our clipboard and pass it to another program for documentation and so on. We can also use the cursors to measure things. We can change here the number of points if we like and have more or less points and see all the points. Of course, now we can see that we have less resolution on the integration, so we can increase this, maybe 1000, run again, and get a finer representation. So this is very easy. As you can see, let's see other weird things that we can do using QSpice. So another weird thing that we can do using QSpice is graphical analysis. You know that we like a lot graphical analysis in electronic circuits. Graphical analysis allows us to better understand the operation of circuits when we have some parameters in the circuit. So for example, in this case, we want to solve this nonlinear equation to find the roots of this function in which we have this parameter slope. So we can do a graphical representation. On one hand, we represent this function. On the other hand, we represent this other function. Here we show they are y1 and y2. So following the same process as before, we are representing from minus pi to pi both functions. And we are doing a step analysis, changing the slope with different values. So here we can see the plotting and we can graphically analyze everything and get even the roots of the equation. So here we have the program. If we go to the program, we can even do a zoom and find the points very quickly. We can even represent as a function of the angle in degrees instead of radians and do many different things. Here we have another example of photometric calculations using QSpice. In this case, we want to obtain the total radiant power emitted by a lamp, the visible radiant power, the radiant efficiency, the total luminous flux, and the luminous efficacy, and then plot different things on the right. So here we have the expression of the radiant flux density emitted by the lamp. It's an incandescent lamp. A is the area and T is the temperature. And here we have the different parameters. In this voltage source, we have the response of the human eye as a function of the wavelength. Here V of X represents the wavelength that we are changing from 200 nanometers up to 4,000 nanometers. And using the dot trend statement, we do the variation of the wavelength for the analysis. We also do the change of scale, as we have seen before. And here we are doing the luminous flux density calculation in lumens per nanometer. On the right, we have the representations. This is the curve corresponding to the emission of the lamp. This is the response of the human eye and this is the product in red, is the product of the response of the human eye times the emission of the lamp and multiplied by the efficacy factor, which is 683. And with this statement, we are doing the different calculations, the integrals and so on, and we can see the results on the output window.
But here, on the representation, we can also do things pressing control and right click, and we can do even calculations, for example, obtaining the maximum value. We can do even the integral, it's another way to do it. We can use the cursor to measure the different points, and so on. Another common thing that we do in mathematical programs is to read data from files and then process this data with different operations and so on. And we can do this also using QSpice. For this, we use a voltage source with a piecewise linear definition. Then we use file and give here the file with the information of the data. For example, here we have this file with the value of the power and the value of the efficiency. And with this, doing the same as we have seen before, we can do the plotting of the efficiency as a function of the power. And once we have this variable in our schematic, we can do everything with it. And the inverse action, how to do the writing of a file from QSpice, we can also do that. We only have to go to the plotting, go to file and export data. So here we can select the number of points, the format, the expressions that we are going to export. Click OK and that's it. For example, here we have an example in which we can see the time, which is not important in this case. We have here the column representing the values of the power and the values of the efficiency. So we can see that we can do many things using QSpice and we will see other tricks in future videos. So with this we finish this video for today. I hope that you find this information useful and you try these tricks. I think it's a lot of fun to use a program for things for which it's not specifically intended. Please let me know your feedback about these ideas if you find them interesting or not. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.